Gomer. We all know Gomer. She's known as a prostitute, a, a whore. Um, but I think we, we have Gomer all wrong, and I think we miss the lesson of the Lord. When we look at the background of the time that, that Gomer lived, she lived in a time where, where Israel was split into two. The people of God had two nations. On the south was Judah, and the north was Israel. And Israel was was in a total state of backsliding, apostasy, as we say. And they did such things as sacrifice children in fire. There were male and female temple prostitutes. They, 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 they made every high place where they had a town, they had, they had um, temples and erections and, and, and wooden uh, structures and, and golden calves to, to idols, and God was about to destroy them. And during this time, he tells Hosea, who was, who was a, a prophet at that time, who kept prophesying to them what, about what God wants them to do. And it wasn't working. So what God did is that he, he used Gomer as an example to, to show the people of God exactly what they were to him. She was like a, a her marriage to Hosea was like a praise dance or a pantomime or play to show people because words weren't working. The Lord is going to try everything he can to win us back. So he uses Gomer. And while we criticize Gomer for her conduct, which no one approves, it is her past. You see, um, because while, while while we criticize Gomer, she wasn't sacrificing her children. She kept her children. She ran out on her marriage, yes, but when she was redeemed, she remained. And that says much more about the people of Israel because they were lost. The 10 tribes of Israel are lost. They're lost until today. The reason why the, the, the people of, of God of the Old Testament, our Jewish brothers are called Jewish, is because all that was left was Judah. So when we look at at Gomer. Yes, she ran out on her husband. Yes, the children may not have been his. But when he redeemed her, he didn't redeem her of, of a state of uh, total debauchery or total lasciviousness or, or, or total hoishness, if you will. She was loved by a, another man. But she allowed herself to redeem. She accepted the redemption. And no more is said about her. And, and, and for me, um, as, as a person who loves the Lord, if nothing else can be said about me, let it be said that I accepted the redemption. Let it be said that, that, that Christ dying on the cross was enough for me. Let it be said that, 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 I, that I accepted Christ as the husband man of my life. And that's what Gomer did. So in comparison to the way her people were at that time, she was not as bad. In comparison to many of us here now on the final covenant, she is not that bad. And if we can be said to receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, as she did in pantomime by being redeemed, then we too are saints. So looking back, Gomer is a saint. Another thing, it's easy for us to harp on other people's issues and other people's failings, but God is not through with them yet. It's easy for us to even criticize ourselves and think we can't get any further because of our past failings. God is not through with us yet. And, and all we have to do, as Gomer did, is receive the redemption, and we shall be fine. So in closing, Gomer was a saint. Gomer did the right thing, and we only remember her as a prostitute or as a loser because of our own internal failings. Lord, I thank you, I worship you, and I adore you, and I ask that, Lord, we rise above up above our failings, above our problems, above our our things that we did wrong, and look towards to you for our hope and our strength. We thank you, Lord, we love you. In your holy name we pray, amen. Goma, like us, are to hold on to the Lord and never let go. Even if we fail, we get, we get right back up. Because what Goma was, essentially, she was just a prodigal woman. She came back. Just like the prodigal son did. Just like we all can. Just like the disciples did. We can do this thing. In Jesus' name.